Mortal Kombat 1, in just the month of February was beaten by its own predecessor MK11 in the Steam Charts player base. It has suffered mixed and average reviews across Steam, Metacritic and the Xbox Game Store. Better yet, every single YouTuber that's related in any way to it has put out extensive videos on the majority of problems the game suffers from. In combination with decreased audience interest from both casual players and professional tournament ones with the game failing to crack the top 10 at Combo Breaker, it's very obvious Mortal Kombat 1's reception leaves a lot to be desired. Why is that, you may ask? Well, in order to answer that question, we actually don't need to travel that far back into the past. All we need to do first is make a quick comparison with the previously mentioned Mortal Kombat 11. At first glance, both games look gorgeous, but with very different atmospheres. Mortal Kombat 11 has a dark and gritty tone to it, with more sinister set pieces and slightly darker lighting. Wow, Mortal Kombat 1 on the other hand has a more peaceful scenery with vibrant colors and beautiful architecture. Both have their own unique approach to how they portray the franchise's signature locations. Which team you prefer is more so down to personal preference. With that, let's actually look into the roster themselves. Mortal Kombat 11 launched with a total of 24 playable fighters not counting the pre-order bonus. In comparison, Mortal Kombat 1 launched with a total of 22 playable fighters, also not counting the pre-order bonus. That's two fighters less than the previous game from 2019. Now, losing two fighters may not seem like that big of a deal for some, but it's huge, and here's the reason why. In Mortal Kombat 11, all characters have four unique intros and outros that they can unlock throughout their mastery. In Mortal Kombat 1, characters have only two intros, depending on the side they're on, and one outro in total. Made significantly worse from the fact that the Mortal Kombat 11 intros, which consisted of three dialogues back and forth, have now been nerfed down to only two, leading to dialogue that feels unfinished and quite laughable in some instances. You remind me of my nephew, Thandris. In what way, your majesty? In what way, your majesty? But the dialogue and unique animations aren't the only thing that got hit. Customization is significantly worse as well. In Mortal Kombat 11, every character had three gear pieces that could be swapped between. For example, with Scorpion, you could switch different masks, spears and swords, along with tons of different color options that are unique to set characters and match them. On the other hand, in Mortal Kombat 1, you have only one singular gear piece that can be modified. For most of the ninjas, that's the mask, meaning Scorpion's spear and Smoke's knife can be customized in any way. Made worse when it comes to Rain, who can only have his staff customized, meaning the mask cannot be changed or removed. While in Mortal Kombat 11, every character could be customized to feel and look unique to you, in Mortal Kombat 1 characters are extremely limited and customization is entirely determined by the grindy leveling up system and the invasion color swaps. The extremely limited customization feels like a double negative, as the majority of characters have extremely generic base costumes, many of them also falling victim to the lead designer's foot fetish, causing all of the females and half the males to have their feet and toes exposed for the majority of their skins. Customization is garbage, there's no other way to put it. It's a huge downgrade from what we had in Mortal Kombat 11, which itself was a downgrade from Injustice 2. At this rate, the next Mortal Kombat game may as well not bother featuring it. But what about the actual gameplay, the different modes and activities the games have to offer? Now, when it comes to the core gameplay of Mortal Kombat 1, one thing players from Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 11 will instantly notice 
isn't actually the cameos, but more so the mirror burn. In both Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 11, you place the input for the special move, and if you decide to mirror burn it, you press that button separately after you've already started the move. Not in Mortal Kombat 1, however. In this game, you need to press the meter burn button at the same time as the last button of the combo, meaning you have to be extremely precise with your timing and apply four buttons at almost the exact same time. It's the same exact system Netherrealm used in Mortal Kombat X. I hated it back then, and I'm not a huge fan of it here either. It just makes the game harder for no real benefit. I mean, fighting games have never been that easy to begin with, so I've never understood these types of changes. It's not the end of the world once you get used to it, it does become quite natural, but it can take a while if you're transitioning from the previous titles. Though I dislike it, it's not a deal breaker by any means. Unlike the cameos, which certainly could be, originally debuting in Mortal Kombat 9 as tag team mode, it allowed players to pick two separate fighters and combine their efforts by performing special moves to help each other's combos and swap between each other. It was a very creative and interesting idea, but it wasn't the most popular. Those skilled players were able to create incredibly impressive combos. It's not a mode that really flourished among the casual player base. Still, it was a mode that was heavily requested for years after, and in MK1, it finally did return, though it was a shadow of its former self. You're now picking cameo fighters who are separate from the main roster. They can help out with combos, but you can't switch to them in order to play as them. Now, that's both good and bad. It's great that now characters who didn't make it into the main roster can be seen in this cameo form, where they can still do their unique moves and finishers. The overall pace of Mortal Kombat 1 feels significantly slower than the one of Mortal Kombat 11, which can be a good or a bad thing depending on who you are. You are now able to perform air combos, which is a nice addition, and I think most will agree that the removal of crushing blows was certainly a plus. However, Basing your entire core gameplay on a mode that was just a side dish in MK9 and was never extremely popular to begin with is a shot in the dark to say the least. It means that now instead of just learning your character's moves, you have to also learn the cameo's moves to go with it. You have to learn both regular combos and combos with your cameo. It brings a lot of extra work for players to do. And although that would be a turn off for some, it's not that bad if you're able to have fun on different gameplay modes that the game offers. Speaking of which, in Mortal Kombat 11 you have the base story mode, featuring 12 chapters of main plotline, along with classic towers and the towers of time, a combination of unique towers, some of them are classic towers with random variants thrown in, others are boss battles, and you even have co-op towers where you will fight alongside other players to take down a main antagonist. They will all award you with different gear and skins along with combat cards and craftable materials that can be used in the crypt. Speaking of that, the crypt makes a return. It's a fully fleshed out environment on Shang Tsung's island, filled with traps and secrets for you to explore, as well as deadly creatures hunting you down. It's an extremely large location, and it's honestly an amazing adventure, especially on your first time getting through it. Chests are filled with unique loot from skins, gear, and combat cards, there's no shortages of treasures, and it can feel very fun as you find and unlock different places and complete different puzzles. It's an overall fun experience that is completely different from the regular gameplay, which is great as it gives you some diversity and allows you to take a breather from the regular experience something the developers couldn't be bothered with when it comes to the sequel. In the new Mortal Kombat 1, you have your story mode, consisting of 15 unique chapters, 
3 more than the base of 11. You have the classic towers as per usual and then you have invasion. I can and I have made a full video on invasion mode and how much of a travesty it is, so let's keep this short and simple. In summary, it's a mode where you walk from point to point, fighting endless enemies one after the other with no real purpose or reward. Every now and again you'll find and open a chest which will have a skin or a gear piece in it, but it's mostly just walking around endlessly fighting AI enemies. It is genuinely one of the most repetitive, grindy and unrewarding experiences I've ever faced in a video game. I mean sure, every now and again you have a test your might or a survive, but they are rare and even they get boring quick. Invasion mode misses the entire purpose of what it was supposed to be. Instead of an alternative to the regular experience of Mortal Kombat, like the Crypt, which gave you something else to do as to not get burned out, this mode burns you out 5 times as fast as the regular gameplay becomes the B.O.N.D.O. with zero diversity of any kind, rewards that honestly look laughably bad and an extreme level of grinding needed for its completion. It's no wonder it's one of the most overwhelmingly hated modes in Mortal Kombat history. It removes the ability to make a choice, like in the Towers of Time, as to who you want to face and for what reward, and it removes the fun and rewarding exploration of the crypt. It doubles down on the most bland and boring elements the game has to offer. Outside of the story, this is the main mode that's meant to keep you playing and it's honestly embarrassing how bad of a job it's doing. There hasn't been a single Mortal Kombat content creator that has stood back and defended this mode either. Everyone is united in their opinion that it's genuinely awful and possibly the worst mode ever added to a Mortal Kombat game. And if people are dedicating their time to playing invasions and shit, that stuff is a slog, man. Like that stuff, I couldn't even get past 15 minutes. It's brutal. But that's not enough, no. Just to put the nail on the head of this absolute disgrace, Warner Brother Games combined their effort alongside Netherrealm Studios to create some of the most insulting and greedy microtransaction tactics in recent memory. Take a look. In Mortal Kombat 11, although microtransactions were still a thing, owners of the premium edition would get a lot of cosmetics for free as part of the deal. There were still some skin packs that were exclusively bought separately, but the vast majority of new items were included in the pack, and even those that needed to be bought with time crystals weren't that hard to get as weekly Towers of Time races would reward time crystals from time to time and you could get 50 crystals per day if you played 5 combat league matches. So even if you didn't want to spend extra money, you could afford some of these exclusive items just through playing the game consistently. Mortal Kombat 1 on the other hand is entirely different. All future content is paid separately, no matter if you own the premium edition of the game or not. Every single new skin will cost you dragon crystals and unlike the previous game, crystals are extremely difficult to acquire. The only way is by leveling up characters to level 31, which for anyone who's played MK1 knows is extremely time consuming and awards only 100 crystals per character, which isn't a lot knowing every skin is between 500 and 1000 crystals and once you use them up, there is no way to regenerate them, there is no way to earn crystals after you've leveled up your characters, that's it. Not to mention the absurdly hideous $10 holiday fatalities for Halloween and Christmas. It's a level of microtransactions even electronic arts would be proud of. So, just to sum everything up, 
Mortal Kombat 1's customization is a huge leap backwards in comparison to that of Mortal Kombat 11. The core gameplay is different from that of MK11, but not entirely for the worst or the better, it's just different. The actual playable content is one of the worst live service experiences the gaming world has to offer, as it doubles down on Mortal Kombat's most repetitive and grindy unfun elements. And just to put the cherry on this already shit-stained cake, it features the worst microtransaction tactics of any Netherrealm game in history, trying desperately to milk its player base for even the smallest piece of new content added to the game. So all said and done, I think it's fair to say that this game is an absolute disgrace and a pathetic cash grab from WB Games in their never-ending attempt to shove as much poisonous life service elements into their franchises until they all drop dead in a heap. Many people don't know this about me, but Mortal Kombat is my thing. It's a huge passion of mine, and to see the absolute lack of respect and quality, and more than anything else, the lack of care Netherrealm shows for their series, makes me mad and a little sick. It's in my personal belief that Netherrealm should lose the license for Mortal Kombat. Ed Boon has already spoken at length that he's tired of the MK franchise and wants to do something else a new game, and boy, does this shit clearly show that. I've seen more passion in the Activision Spider-Man games, it's embarrassing. Give Mortal Kombat to an actual studio that gives a damn and wants to do right by it and its loyal fans. Because although Mortal Kombat 1 may sell well right now, the amount of bad taste that this game has left in people's mouths will be more than enough to bankrupt Netherrealm on their next attempt. At the end of Mortal Kombat 11, people couldn't wait for what's next. Today, people can't care less and are sick and tired of Mortal Kombat. They're not looking forward to anything related to it. This game will kill the franchise and time will prove it. A sad end to a once legendary series. Until next time, this has been Wild Gold, and thank you very much for watching.